Hi, I'm Brandon Collins, and I uh, wanted to talk to you guys that um, are thinking about becoming trainers or fraternity trainers, um, and kind of like I'll tell you like, the way I went through it and what I think what I would do different or were the same. But um, the biggest thing is, uh, I what I think is get on as many horses as you can at first to to learn the different horses and stuff, then kind of figure out what suits you. Because everybody has a different way of doing things. Um, ask questions. Like a lot of the the way I started, and it was being back in Maryland, it was a little bit different because there's not really any many trainers back there that do this. So I just kind of went, and I went a lot. And I had my own horses, and uh, I had some customer horses that wanted to go, but not very many people that was wanting to futurity. But I would go as much as I could, and even I don't know if it's right or wrong. But like I went to Oklahoma City from 2007 to 2012 was the first year I got a check was 2012. So I went a long time without making money. Like just was going and get exposed to as much as you can. Um, whoop, watch out for many ponies. <laughs> and uh, he, um, you're all right. He, uh, uh, so like I said, just keep going as much as you can and talk to as many people as you can. I did a lot like, when I first started watching the warm-up pens and stuff. And that was a good and bad thing, because what I would do, I was kind of shy and didn't really want to talk to anybody or bother anybody. I'd watch what they were doing, had no clue why they were doing it, and I would just try to do it myself and see what worked. Which, I, it worked here and there, but a lot of times it got me into trouble. So I think if you see something that you see interesting, ask them why they're doing it. And to me, find the theories behind that, because that'll help you a lot more. And and help you develop a style. And then uh, that's the biggest thing, is finding your own way. It's like I've rode with a lot of people. Um, Craig Brooks was probably the first one I started riding with, or just got to be friends with. And um, like I never actually went and stayed anywhere for any amount of period of time, but like at Futurities or between Futurities or something, I would go and like stay at his place a while and we rode together. And we still talk every day about training horses and different stuff we were learning and trying. Like I don't think you ever stop learning. Like, I'm not, not afraid to try something. And um, two, don't try to mimic somebody's style. Try to, like, you can take things from him, from her, anybody. Like, between him, um, and then a little bit later, I stayed in, in Georgia uh, over the winter, and Cody Bowserman was there, and then me and him got to be pretty good friends, and I learned a lot from him. And one thing that makes me, made me realize that what a winner that he is, is, like, I had done a little bit May one a little bit here and there, but not too much at that point. And um, we were riding, and we'd talk every day and stuff. And he got done before I did, and I was riding one day, and he come out and said, I just want to see what you're doing. And I thought he was joking. And then so I just talking to him, we were standing there. He said, well, if you're not going to ride, I'm going to leave. He said, I want to see how you train a horse. So I thought that was somebody that had been one way more than I could ever dream of. but. The fact that he is still, he's been doing this, probably knows more than, he's probably forgot more than most people know, but he's still wanting to learn something or see what everybody else is doing to that he might be able to take for his program, or he might not take anything, but at least he sees it and knows, is, is open to it, new ideas. So I think that's a big thing of, because this stuff evolves. Everybody, so every day the horses are different, they're getting better every year, and you try something new, and that's the biggest thing is being open to, oh, being open to things, but don't, don't lose your way either. Um, and another one, Cassie Mowry, I've learned a lot from her. And um, with her, like, we have different ways. She doesn't stop one a whole bunch, and I like to stop one more, but works for me, doesn't work for her. But obviously, she's phenomenal. I mean, one of the best there ever was, I, I believe. So, like, <clears throat> getting situations like that, if you're just around it and you can meet these people and, and just have conversations with them and like everybody likes to talk about how they train one, I believe, because then you're bouncing ideas off each other, and and that's a good way to to learn what works, what doesn't work, what might work for you, what might not. So, I don't know. I kind of believe you take a little bit from everybody, make your own way, and uh, stick with something too. Like if something, give something a fair chance. Like don't think you're going to do something today, just one thing, and it's going to work. Give it a, a week or two, then. Um, uh, the owners, the owner side of it, getting owners, be honest, like don't ever undercut somebody. It'll, like I, I see it all the time. It'll come back to haunt you. 
I believe. Like, just do what you think is right, and your owners will come. You do a good job, you make a nice horse, the owners will find you, like, in my opinion, and um, appreciate a good horse. Like, also understand that every horse is, they're like people. Not every horse is Michael Jordan. And if you get one of those, that's, I mean, those, those great ones are just, you'll know. Like Rocco was probably the first one that I got on that was like that. And from everything I've rode, I got on him. And uh, the, first, he, the colt breaker had him 90 days. The first day I stepped on him and I touched the rein and pulled him to one side. And I was like, I feel like I could run barrels on him. And he'd never seen a barrel. Like some of those horses, they're out there. And those are what make you, I believe. And they teach you so much. So just keep riding and you get the opportunity to get on one of those. They'll come around. You keep doing it enough. Like I've had a few since then and uh, they teach you how to make the, the good ones better and then the great ones really great. And that um, really take care of your horse is the biggest thing. Cause those, like I said, those horses like him, they don't, they're not, they don't come around every day and they'll try anything for you. And they, like I said, the, really be good to your horse and treat all of them like that too like not just the great ones the the good ones the mediocre ones just try to make the horse the best you can make it and then um, the winning it comes like you don't winning is a lot of luck like you have to be prepared you have to have your horse ready and you have to put yourself in the situation to win but if you go out there and try to force a win it's going to be trouble so I think that too is just stick with your program, make a good horse, and then let the horse win.